Um, Jess. When exactly will you be coming home, young lady? And why did you go out this morning without telling me anything? I'm with John at the doctor's today. I did tell you yesterday I'd be here. Is something wrong? You're at the doctor's? Are you kidding me? Wait a sec. You mean you're still there? Uh, you left first thing this morning and you're still at the doctor's? How long can a freaking visit to the doctor's take? When will you be getting your ass back to this house? Here's a hint. The answer better be soon. Well, I did have an appointment. But we've been sitting in the waiting room for a while now. The waiting times have been getting really bad here lately. I don't think we should be much longer, though. I bet you're only going for John's medicine. Why do you need to waste this much time on something so trivial? You're a stay-at-home housewife, Missy, and you better not forget that. You have duties to this household far more important than your son's proxy medicine. I want this place clean from top to bottom the second you get back. Do you understand me? Wait, what? But I already asked you if you wouldn't mind doing the housework today. Huh? What are you talking about? I have no recollection of that. Obviously, it makes more sense for you to do it. You are the housewife, after all. What did you think you were signing up for when you married my son, you imbecile? Quit talking back to me, get back to this house, and do your frickin' job. But I told you, Mathilda, I'm planning on visiting my parents after we finish up at the doctor's. Even if I do the housework today, it's gonna end up being really late. As long as that's fine by you, then I can do it. Goodness me, Jess, you're only stopping by at your folks' place to show your face, right? Why would that take all day? Wait, you're not trying to shirk your housework duties, are you? I do hope you're not the kind of girl to behave so shamefully. I did tell you this yesterday, did I not? Am I going senile or something? My mom and dad's dog has been sick these last few days. John's worried too, so we're going to head over to check on him. That's why I asked you to do the housework just this once. Look, I get it's probably a little inconvenient for you, and I'm really sorry about that. But it is just a one-off. Would you mind doing it, please? My folks say the dog really hasn't been well. A dog? A dog is more important to you than your duties to this family as a housewife? You're a failure as a wife, a mother, and a human being. Ugh. A dog? I've never heard anything so ridiculous in my life. Mathilda, I have known Spike since I was a little girl. Sure, I get that he probably just seems like a pet to you, but to me, he's part of the family. I'm sorry, I get that it's probably inconvenient for you, and I apologize for that, but won't you please try to understand? Fine, I see how it is. What you're saying is, screw you, Mathilda, I refuse to fulfill my obligations to you and your family despite the fact you so kindly allowed me to marry your son and move in with you. Any objections, or did I hit the bullseye? Please don't be like this, Mathilda, you know that's not what I'm saying at all. If it's too much trouble for you to do the housework, then please feel free not to and I'll get on top of everything as soon as I get back. It's not like I'm sleeping over or anything. Even if it's late, I promise to get everything done, okay? Look how quick she is to get irritated and defensive. That boy John's going to grow up and be just like his mother at this rate. Or worse, maybe he already inherited your defective genes. Oh my god, it doesn't bear thinking about oh, that poor boy. We can't have him ending up like you. What's that supposed to mean? Now, I might be overprotective with him sometimes, but from where I'm standing, it looks like John is growing up to be a good, honest young man. Good and honest? Oh. <laughs> Let's face it, the reason you're at the doctor's all the time is most likely because he's a weak, feeble excuse of a boy with a bad immune system due to your poor parenting techniques. But more importantly, do you have any idea how much trouble you two have caused me? I mean, seriously, trying to palm off your housework duties on your aged mother-in-law disgraceful would be understating it. It was only last week he was in bed all day with the sniffles. I'm embarrassed to call that sorry excuse of a child my grandson. 
Do not speak about my son like that. It's not like he enjoys being ill, so leave him alone. You've been spoiling that boy far too much lately. You know, back in my day when we were sick, we just got on with it. Ever heard of a stiff upper lip? We certainly didn't go running to the doctors at the first sign of trouble like you weaklings nowadays. The reason he's so weak and feeble is because he knows that every time he gets ill, you'll be fawning over him. Catering to his every need and whim like some subservient slave woman. You're encouraging him to get ill with your abominable parenting techniques. It was me who asked you to do the housework. Leave John out of this. It has nothing to do with him. Now, if you wouldn't mind, stop saying such awful things. You do not tell me what to do, young lady. Who on earth do you think you are? Besides, it's God's honest truth. What would you have me do? Lie? Ugh, I knew it. I knew this would happen. This is why I was so opposed to the idea of you and my son getting married in the first place. If only he could have found himself someone with less attitude. I knew your arrogant, self-absorbed personality would end up causing problems. You're incapable of doing housework, and you can't even look after your own son. If you care about what's best for my son, Gary, how about you put him out of his misery and get a divorce? Like, right now. Shut up. Just shut up already. Just because you're my mother-in-law doesn't give you any right to speak to me like crap. You have no right to speak to me like this. Not about my family dog, not about John, not about anything. Excuse me, is that any way to speak to your mother-in-law? Mark my words, Missy. This little rebellious streak of yours ends right here, right now. If this is your attitude, then you leave me no choice. You just activated my trap card, you little witch. You'll only have yourself to blame for the hell that's about to rain down on you. Prepare yourself for the worst. Whatever, the bottom line is I'll be back home late tonight. So I'm sorry, but you're just gonna have to deal with it. Mathilda, I'm sorry to bother you. But I really need to ask you something. Is now a good time? What's wrong, dear? Your boy John's medicine wouldn't have happened to have gone missing, would it? How do you know about that? I knew you must have had something to do with it. You know something about this, don't you? Tell me where it is. No, dear, of course not. It was just a lucky guess, that's all. I don't admit to knowing a thing. We have to go out now, but I can't find it anywhere. John could be in danger without that medicine. Do you have any idea how important it is? I can't believe you'd take it. If you know, please just tell me. I won't be mad. I don't even have time to be mad because we have to go out. This isn't the time for games, Mathilda. Games? What's gotten into you, dear? Are you going crazy or something? Oh, would you like me to call a shrink? I told you, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Surely you just misplaced it because you're a messy and disorganized failure of a woman. I mean, good grief, it's a little rich of you to try and blame your lack of discipline on your poor elderly mother-in-law. I'm not joking, Mathilda. We really, really need that medicine. What would you do if something happened to John? That's your responsibility as his mother, moron! Anyway, for the millionth time, I don't know anything about your stupid medicine, so stop harping on at me already. If you're going to make wild accusations against me, at least come at me with proof. I don't have any proof. But why else would you have just said that? I didn't even say anything about medicine, but somehow you knew it was missing. Drop the act already. Like I said, lucky guess, you read too deeply into things, dear. I feel bad for John, having a mom like you. Imagine how horrible it must be for him, having to be around someone so neurotic all the time. Oh, that poor, poor boy. You really are the most useless piece of garbage wife ever to walk the face of the earth, do you know that? <laughs> what am I saying? Of course you don't. You're so arrogant and self-absorbed, you probably don't even care if you're a burden on those around you. <laughs> Blaming others for your own irresponsibility. This is rich, even for you. How dare you? Look, I'm sorry. If I made a misunderstanding, I genuinely apologize. Do you think your little proxy apology gets you off the hook, Missy? 
You're messing with the wrong mother-in-law here. Huh, you young people these days. I'll never forgive you if my grandson grows into a useless waste of space like his mother. And what must my poor son's life be like with you as his wife? Oh, I shudder to think. Look, like I said, I am sorry for causing a fuss over the medicine. If you really don't know anything about it, then let's just forget it. I'll keep looking. I'll find it even if I have to turn the place upside down. Finally! Why couldn't you have been mature from the get-go? You might be incapable of doing housework, but you should at least keep on top of your son's medicine. You're not even capable of living up to your bare minimum of responsibilities as a mother. It's really quite pathetic. I'll tell you what, here's some extra motivation. If you don't find it soon, you won't have a home for much longer. You're right, I totally deserve to be kicked out if I don't find the medicine. Sorry again, Mathilda, and thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to speak to me. That's right, finally some respect. Don't ever bug me with trivial, nonsensical crap like this again, or there will be hell to pay. Now go and find that medicine. You'll never be able to forgive yourself if something happens to John as a result of your sloppy parenting. If he dies, it'll be all your fault. I know. Sorry to trouble you. I'll be showing my face at my parents' house again today. I'll be back home around noon tomorrow with the latest. Again? Actually, you know what? I'll let it slide. This time. I'll be going out with my friend for drinks today, so it doesn't matter. Oh, aren't I generous and big-hearted? But don't think this gets you off the hook. You better make sure you do the housework the second you get back. You can at least do that, right? Yes. If you don't, I'll be very angry with you. You won't like me when I'm angry. I suggest you be very careful, Missy. All right. Catch you later. Where's my supper? Do you want me to lose my temper with you? It's about time you got your act together, Missy. You're on thin ice already, so I suggest you start behaving like a proper housewife and soon. Sorry, but I didn't make any supper. Me, John, and Gary aren't home right now. Huh? Why on earth not? Where the hell are you then? Do you know what time it is? I fall asleep for five minutes, and when I wake up, you've all disappeared. Is this any way to be treating your poor elderly mother-in-law? This is not acceptable behavior. I'm really sorry, Mathilda. We're at a funeral right now, so please cook your own supper. We don't need any, so don't worry about cooking any extra for us. Huh? Whose funeral? What are you talking about? This is the first I've heard about a funeral. There's no way I can say this without sounding rude, so I'm just going to come out with it. Don't play dumb with me, Mathilda. Don't pretend you don't know, because I know that's not possible. No, really, what are you talking about? Believe me, dear, I may not be as young as I once was, but my memory is doing just fine. And a funeral is hardly the kind of thing I'd forget about if I'd heard something about it. This all happened because of you. You're not getting out of this by feigning ignorance. How are you going to make this right? Hey, w wait a sec. Uh, wait, really? Uh, you have to be joking me, right? I wish I was joking, but I'm not. I is John... Is John really... Uh, no, uh, this has to be some kind of sick joke. Uh, I never meant for this to happen. Uh, no! You never meant for this to happen? What's that supposed to mean? Quit beating around the bush already and tell me exactly what you did. I... Oh... Well, uh... John's medicine. John's medicine? What about it? So it was you who took it then? Ugh, I knew it. I knew I hadn't misplaced it. But... Oh, but... I didn't throw it away because I wanted this to happen. I... If I'd known, I would never have done it. I, I swear... I just wanted to teach you a little lesson for your despicable behavior is all. Just please, what was I supposed to do? You weren't fulfilling your duties to this family as my son's wife. 
This isn't what I wanted, I swear! Is that so? I'm relieved to hear you say that. All right, this conversation is over. For now. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? You don't need to know that. And besides, I don't have time to be having this conversation right now. Like I just told you, I'm at a funeral. We'll be discussing this again later. No, wait, I'll come and meet you. Where's the funeral home? Tell me where you are and I'll be down in a jiffy. I have to be there. Why would you come? Why? Uh, like hell, I'm missing my own grandson's funeral. I can't risk the neighbors finding out I didn't go to my own grandson's funeral. They'll have a field day. The rumor mill would never stop and my reputation in this town would be ruined forever. Wow. If that's how you think, you're the last person we need here. You're not invited. Don't bother trying to find us because we don't want to see you. What? Uh, but this is my grandson's funeral we're talking about here. Uh, you'd deprive him the right to be mourned by his own grandmother? We'll be discussing everything later, that included. Like I said, I don't have time to be having this conversation right now. For the time being, sit quietly at home and wait. I'll message you once things have settled down on our end. Just no, wait! How could you be so irresponsible? Just wait, you can't do this to me! No! Alright, Mathilda, let's do this. Everything's over here now, so let's continue where we left off yesterday, shall we? Why was nobody answering the phone? I tried calling Gary and your parents so many times I lost count. I was starting to think my phone was broken. I missed my own grandson's funeral because of you. What am I supposed to do if the neighbors find out and think badly of me? Do you have any idea how hard I worked to ingratiate myself with these people? Oh my god, my reputation would be finished. That's what you're worrying about in this situation? Seriously? I think you have more serious things to be concerned about than that. More serious things? Like what? Did you conveniently forget that you threw the medicine away? Do you understand what's going to happen if people found out what you did? Do you have any idea of the gravity of the situation you're in? What is with you, woman? You can't seriously be threatening me at a time like this with everything that's going on. Your son just died, you heartless demon. You are a disgrace to all mothers. <laughs> Please, Mathilda. You're the last person on earth who has the right to say that to me. And what are you talking about? John's doing absolutely fine. He's next to me right now, in fact. Huh? What are you talking about? No, what are you talking about? Why would you randomly assume John was dead? Stop it, you weirdo. It's creepy. The only disgrace here is you. You're not just a disgrace to all mothers, you're a disgrace to humanity. But you said it yourself that you were at a funeral. Uh, that's why I was panicking so much. If you don't believe me, how about I send a picture? Both John and Gary are totally fine, so chill your beans. I'm about to send one of all three of us. That's the last time you'll ever see us, so make sure to cherish it, okay? Maybe you can frame it and put it up on the wall so you can be reminded of how you were such a vile, nasty piece of work that even your own family wanted nothing to do with you. What are you talking about? You mean, you lied about the funeral? No, there most certainly was a funeral. I told you on several occasions, right? That my mom and dad's dog had been ill lately? It was our dog's funeral. Spike is dead. The dog? You made me almost lose my mind over a goddamn dog? Why weren't you just straight with me from the beginning? He was getting old. We've had him since I was a kid, and he was always there while I was growing up. It's not like we were too surprised when his health took a turn for the worst. But still, that doesn't make it any less upsetting. He was like family to us. Do not screw me around, Missy. I'm asking you a question. Why did you confuse me by being so damn ambiguous? You made it sound like it was my fault. He died on the day you were sending all those abusive messages. When John and I showed our faces at my folks' place, remember? Apparently he died not long after we left. And what does that have to do with me? I left earlier than planned so I could make it in time to do the housework after all your pestering. Which is why I wasn't even around for his final moments. 
What the? Oh. Don't drag me into your pathetic, sentimental wallowing, you melodramatic crybaby. You made me worry for nothing. Pathetic, sentimental wallowing? That dog was like family to me. Family? Oh. Let's be real here. It's really not as sad as you're making it out to be, is it? He was old, so I knew his time would come before long. The only saving grace was that I was able to prepare myself to a certain extent. But because of your meddling, I wasn't even able to say goodbye properly. What do you mean? How many times are you going to make me say it? What you did with John's medicine. My dog loved John. And you threw away John's important medicine. As his mother, I can never forgive you. Well, 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 who cares? Quit crying over spilled milk, you big baby. It's over already. Besides, John was fine, right? All's well that ends well. How long do you plan on dragging this out, you bloviating drama queen? Sure, it's over, just like you say. As is our relationship with you. Huh? Wait, you said that when you sent the photo just now, too. Do you think I'm the only one who's furious with you for what you did? Gary and John are saying they'll never forgive you for this. I'm just grateful you at least confessed for what you did. Wait, uh, no, uh, did you... Did you tell them everything? I didn't need to. They've been both next to me the whole time. They saw the messages. Which is why none of us will ever be coming back to that house. Naturally, that means we're cutting all ties with you forever. My son Gary, too? No, you can't do that. I won't allow it. You tried to hurt our son. You must be insane if you think you deserve forgiveness. Hurt him? Uh, but he's fine. Nothing happened, for God's sake. Can't we all just drop it and move on? Stop making a mountain out of a molehill. It was just some medicine. He's alive and kicking next to you right now, isn't he? We had to make an emergency rush to the doctors for some more medicine because of you. You caused us so much hassle, you had no idea John had to have another medical examination. Plus, insurance doesn't cover repeat prescriptions in the case of loss, so we had to pay full price. So what? It's fine. It is not fine. Besides, this isn't just about John. You were even bugging me during the funeral. You've got some nerve to pretend everything's fine after your atrocious behavior. I can't believe I'm being disowned by my own son at this ripe old age. I'm a pensioner, you know. What am I supposed to do without him? Not my problem. What's more concerning is the fact that you made it to that ripe old age without knowing the difference between right and wrong. You made your bed, now lie in it. After that, we cut the wicked stepmother out of our lives for good and embarked on a fresh start. Mathilda had always hated me and John, but as vile as she was, it was clear to me that she loved Gary, my husband, and her son. Which is why I wasn't surprised when she desperately begged and pleaded with him to reconsider after we announced we no longer wanted anything to do with her. To make matters worse for her, her worst fears came true when her neighbors found out about her antics and rumors started to spread around town. As a result, she became a social pariah and quickly lost all her friends. Unable to bear the shame, eventually, she decided to move away. And just because I was prepared for the worst with the dog being old didn't make it any less painful when he finally went. Family is family, after all, right? So, yeah, losing the dog hurt, and it sucked a lot. However, I can't say the same for seeing what became of Mathilda. She totally deserves the loneliness and isolation that awaits her. As for little John, he didn't seem to miss her one bit, which was really revealing, and showed just how little effort she'd put into building a relationship with him. I mean, really? Making fun of someone because their dog died? They say what goes around comes around, and in this case, truer words were never spoken. <laughs>